He'll look at a dog and he'll wait for a minute, then he'll bark at the dog. He has different barks he'll use for different dogs. With a smaller dog, it'll be a lighter yip, yip. And with a larger dog, it'll be a deeper woof, woof. Dogs are amazed. You bark, bark, bark. I've seen so many dogs just do this double take. Look at those babies. I'm Nicole, and this is Max's story for GeoBeats. He was 10 years old, living in a basement. His life started out great, but as his owner's lives changed, his cage was moved down from the basement. He started biting, screaming non-stop, looking for the attention he craved. When I met Max, he came to me as a temporary foster situation. He had just attacked his previous owner's wife, and it was an emergency foster. It was supposed to be one or two weeks. That time passed. They asked me to find him a new home. I think your brother's calling. We've been best friends ever since. It took many years to build up trust, but he's now 30 years old, and he's my child. He did grow up in a house with dogs, so he probably learned some of their various barks. Who's barking at you, boo? Oh. We take him out walking all the time. Hello, dude. <laughs> I think he's really trying to greet the dogs when he sees them, and he just sees them as somebody else to say hello to. That you can do? We think Max. His talking has evolved over time. He started mumbling, much like a little kid, trying to make some sounds. The last few years, he started using more language to communicate. Is it awesome, Max? He'll even say things he doesn't quite know the words for. Gonna go for a walk? I was out for a walk, and Max kept on telling me, Sun Lobster. I didn't think too much about it until I got home and looked in the mirror, and looking right back at me in the mirror was a Sun Lobster. I forgot my sunscreen, so he was trying to tell me the sun had turned me into the color of a lobster. Hi, Max! He really does understand some of the words, and he really does try to communicate. <laughs> A few months ago, we were looking out the window at the snow, and I asked him what he thought of the snow, and he looked at me and said, It's gross. It's snowy out there. He knows what an apple is, and he knows how to say he wants it. I want an apple! He wants an apple! Max thinks he's a small human, and he thrives when I treat him like a toddler. Good strawberry. I give him choices. I ask him if he would like to do something. I give him agency. See him up there? Oh, you want to go straight? Okay. Like having a toddler. He needs constant attention. He needs constant reassurance. And he needs to know that he's part of the family. It's quite possible for Max to outlive me. Some have been willing to live 80 years, 90 years, even 100 years. It's something you have to put in your will. You have to think about succession planning. <laughs> What did you say to him, Max? He seems upset. Those cockatoos are very, very social creatures. He wanted to belong, and I offered him a sense of belong. I'm still in awe that he's as sweet and wonderful as he is. Woof, woof, woof. <laughs>